Yeah, good evening. Like I said, um, thanks for joining. Like we're just gonna have a quick recap on what risk assessment is. Can anybody come up with an answer what risk assessment? Then we'll jump start into it. Um, Peter, Araga. Okay, sir. Um, can I go, sir? Yeah, please. I think um, risk assessment should be the, the potential hazard and the danger which a particular job on board poses when it is being carried out. All right. Um, I really like if Captain Joshua is ready, he's just gonna take us, I mean, continue from there and take us through because he had a lot for us last week and there was no much time. So he's gonna take us through. Uh, you start from that, your definition, refine it and we'll use the risk assessment there. Captain Joshua, are you there? Yes, Captain Flavi, thank you very much. Uh, we want to recap on the definition of risk assessment. Risk assessment is the careful examination of the nature of a job, which can cause potential hazards or harm, and taking precautionary action to mitigate or eradicate the hazard. So this was, we discussed all this last week and uh, we also discussed process of risk assessment. What are you going to follow? What are the things you have to put into consideration when doing a risk assessment? So we have, a prototype of a risk assessment here. So I think we can all see the prototype shared, correct? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. We can see. So, okay, good. From what we have here, we can see the first thing we have on the left corner at the top is the vessel stroke work site which is, it can be any, uh, depending on the vessel you are. So you have to put in the name of the vessel. There is risk assessment folder on the bridge and you, are, you have a risk assessment number, which is maintained on board. So you can see the risk assessment number depending on the number you have on your vessel. Like my vessel, most time we maintain the number depending on the year. So this year now, <clears throat> from January 4th, you can start risk assessment 01-22. So each company, uh, or let me say a vessel can decide on what to do. You can do your risk assessment every month so you can start with from for January 01 slash 01 2022. When you get to February, you can start another one 01 slash 02 2022. So you maintain that. So it depends on how you maintain your register. And also we have permit to work number. So if the risk assessment has an attachment of permit to work, like you want to go into an enclosed space, which entails a permit to work. Screw up, Cap. Captain Flavia, I need you to screw up. Okay, thank you. So permit to work number. Maybe you want to uh, enter an enclosed space or uh, outwork permit. You put it there if there is a permit to work number. If, if there is none, I would advise you not to leave that empty it's better for you to write not applicable. Then the next one we have is a responsible person. The responsible person is 
an officer who is responsible for that operation. So it can be second mate, chief mate, second engineer, third engineer. It has to be indicated, it can be master himself and it can be chief engineer. So the responsible person for that operation, for that task you want to go on, has to be indicated, then the date the risk assessment is completed. Okay, now the work activity being assessed. Mooring operation, bunkering operation, entering to an enclosed space, you have to indicate the kind of uh, activity that you want to go on. Now we go to the task rating. Uh, most of us were not, I think, some of us were not there last week. We talked about this matrix, that is the rating. We talked about the uh, severity and the act action being taken. So very unlikely, unlikely, likely, very likely. We have the likelihood, that is likelihood is a very unlikely, unlikely, likely, and very likely. Then the severity, slight arm, moderate arm, extreme arm. So when you now slash the matrix together, you will have very low risk, low risk, medium risk, very high risk, and very high risk. So depending on what you have, that is going to determine the action to be taken. So for this uh, prototype risk assessment we have, action to be taken is explained directly if you, it is very low, low, medium, high, and very high. So as you can see here, you see the action to be taken for very low. You see the action to be taken for low, action to be taken for the medium, high, and very high. Last week, I remember telling us that in as much begin before you go into a risk assessment, definitely the operation you want to do, you will, uh, by the time you are set, you are going to get to know the risk involved. But after you now put a precautionary action, you the, the, the precautionary action should reduce the risk involved. Definitely, it means if you have a very high risk, after a precautionary action has been taken, the risk is supposed to reduce to low or very low. But if at all you still have a high risk, after precautionary action is taken, then you need to retrace your step. You need to reassess the situation to see if the operation can be held. If it cannot be held, it's better for you to suspend such operation. So let us go on, on a practical example. Now we are to do, we are to we are planning to go on a morning operation. So with what we have now, I want one of us to take us through the risk assessment for a morning operation using the form we have. Agaba. She will I start by saying praise the Lord. Oh, salam alaikum. <laughs> so <laughs> I think um, at this point, um, Captain Joshua is ready to explain to us, I mean, a brief background. And our own motive today is to really carry out a, a full risk assessment, like Captain Joshua said. And I would really like us to look at the screen and make a full risk assessment based on this operation. 
I don't know what is everybody seeing the mining operation going on on the screen now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this was this was one of um, a question that they use in Kitten, um, one of the students um, as well. So we are going to look at this strategically. And the first thing, like Captain Joshua rightly told us again this week, and he repeated it, is first of all finding the hazards. So finding the hazards. So let's look at it. I'm going to share the full screen now, so we know, so we can have both sides of the screen. Uh, yeah, can everybody see my screen now? I have the risk assessment on the left hand side, and I have the tax that we are about to do on the right hand side. Is that what everybody is saying? Affirmative. Yeah. So, um, can everybody start? What's the first hazard? So we can start mentioning, you know, our hazard here. The first thing we do in the risk assessment, like Captain Joshua said, is um, is an hazard. So just tell me, and I will start writing it down. Um, Captain Joshua, over to you, sir. Okay. So can we start assessing the hazard here? What yes, hazard can we see from this operation? From this. From the operation, the other there is the rope one. So, am I so, audible? Yeah, yes, you are audible. So you said, the, I'll just, I'm just going to write it down. So you said morning ropes. Which of the morning, morning ropes? Rope, the yellow one, the yellow one and the brown one. Mostly the yellow one is for fire risk more. The one they are holding on to. OK, is that an hazard? Yes, because when they are pulling this rope, and the rope might take might be might take tension, and with the, with where the, this other the one behind is standing, the rope the way the rope is coiling can can go in between his legs and lead to falling or him falling down. Um, Captain Joshua, should I go ahead and write it? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sir. Okay. Yeah, so what's the next um what's the next hazard? Okay, sir. Um I think the first man here, I can't see him putting on the gloves. So um I think there is there's weeks of Sustaining injuries on his hands. There is no gloves on his hands. There's what? He's not putting on safety gloves, sir. Okay, that's that's a good one. Um, but is that an hazard? Agaba. Yes, sir. Um, it's another because it could lead to an it could lead to injury. To you can sustain injury on his hands, sir. Mm. When, the, when the when the line takes tension and maybe pulls with force. Are you sure? What's an what's an hazard? And, and hazard this and has the hazard should be anything that poses danger to the safety of the ship and the crew. Hazard is what anything that causes danger. Yes, that poses the danger. So, like, what you what you're trying to tell me is because you're getting the point right, but you need to understand what you're saying. Hazard is anything that can cause harm. That's the source of harm. 
Okay, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay, wait. I'm just going to um, resume share. What's the hazard here? Agaba, are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. So what's the hazard here? The hazard okay. here. What was the hazard here? I mean, because whatever was the hazard here has already caused the harm. Mm, yes, sir. Can, and can someone help him? What was the hazard on this yeah, the, picture? The container, the container is the hazard here. Yeah. The container is the hazard. Thank you. So the guy, this, this, um, this, I mean, whoever these unfortunate incidents happened to, if he was wearing an helmet or he wasn't wearing an helmet, would it have been a hazard? No. Hmm? If wearing, if wearing an helmet and the weight of this container wouldn't make any difference. It will not make any difference. Really of, yes. The okay. will so not assuming, okay, so assuming the element, assuming it will make it will have made a difference, that's it's the element will have saved him. Would him not wearing the element be an hazard? Yes, it would be an hazard, yes. Him not wearing an element is an hazard. Okay, so can yeah, Peter and Agaba. I really need to get this. What's the definition of hazard here on the screen now? A hazard is a sort of a potential harm or damage or a situation with potential for harm or damage. Okay. It might be too much grammar, but let's make it simple. The first line, read it out for me, Peter, please. Risk is the no, line. the first line, a hazard. I want to hear okay, a hazard is a source of potential harm. A hazard is a source of potential harm. A source of potential harm, meaning is the root cause of a harm that is about to happen. Meaning it is what will cause a harm to happen. Now, what I'm trying to say this is, Agaba, the arm glove in the morning operation will prevent a harm from happening. So you're not wearing it is a step, I mean, neglected, that will have helped in preventing an arm to happen. Now, looking at this picture here on slide, um, slide three, the source of arm is the container. Now, assuming an ailment can be able to withstand um, the severity or the strength from this container, and you didn't wear it, I mean, you wore it, that will have been a preventive or mitigative um, measure to reduce the risk here. In full essence, what I'm trying to say is, you wear an ailment, you don't wear an ailment, you wear an angle of, you don't wear an angle of, that is not an hazard. And I'm saying this, I'm trying to stress this out because this is, this has failed candidates in the sense that the examiner will put it, you don't under, I mean, the candidate does not understand what an hazard is. Are you, are you guys getting me? So if, yes, if I'm doing a mooring operation, the hazard itself, Agaba has rightly said, might be, you know, the ropes. The ropes might be a source of arm. The ropes might injure your hand, it might tangle your hand, the excess rope down there. But I didn't wear a glove, is not an hazard. So now, when you now look at everything, if the rope is an hazard, what can you do to prevent the arm from occurring? Is it that you can prevent it or reduce it? Guess what? That is where your hand gloves comes in. Are you understanding me? So yes. let's not 
again, say wearing of hand glove, wearing of hat hats, wearing of, I mean, wearing of shoe gloves is an hazard or not an hazard. And we will categorize that and class that in another um, sector where it's supposed to be and put it in its right place. And that's why we're trying to practically see all this. Um, Agaba, Peter, did you get that? Yes, I got it. Very, very good. Um, just again on this example, can somebody tell me another hazard before I go back to our example? What? Hello, can someone tell me another hazard here? Yeah. Um, Beatrice, yes. Okay, maybe the crane used in lifting the uh, container. Yeah, the crane, you're even looking at a bigger picture. The crane using a lifting the container. Why is that an hazard? Is an hazard because the if the uh, save uh, the load limit save a uh, load limit if it is not up to is not enough to lift the container, it poses hazard. Oh, okay. So it now let's say we are using a crane beyond its working capacity, beyond yeah. its safe working load. That That's is enough. an hazard. But if it is below a safe working load and if the crane has the capacity to lift it, is that an hazard? Can it cause harm in that sense? Come again, sir. If the load, I mean, if the crane can comfortably lift the load, is certified to lift this particular load, will it still be an hazard? Yes, it will still be an hazard. Okay. Um, what, uh, why, what kind of harm will it cause? There's the harm of also, there's the, the harm that there's a, anything can happen and during the process of lifting it, there might be a human error whereby the train operator will not be seeing the person that is controlling it and drop the, uh, the container on the person also, despite the fact that he can comfortably lift the container. Exactly. So now, now we're making it all constructive, which is good. Um, I'm seeing a chat here. I'm just going to read it. Yeah, negligence of noise using tagline. Yes, example. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. That's what I'm, I'm seeing now. So let's assume operator, crane operator, not, I mean, unable to operate the crane safely is an hazard. If the crane itself, like um, Beatrice rightly said, does not have the capacity to lift this kind of container is an hazard because this is what is gonna happen. Is either the crane falls off or the container falls off from the crane um, as well. If, for instance, someone rightly said, um, there is no clear deck policy, that's the environment there it's not a clear deck where people can easily have room to maneuver and carry out operations. That's also an hazard because it can really put the seafarers or whoever in arm's length in a tight corner and in a very dangerous corner. So those are hazard as well. Did anybody see a risk of falling down from this container if you are standing on this container? Yes. Hmm? Yes, you can also fall down from there. So if this, if they are, if you are not standing on this container, you are standing on the bare floor, that will have not been an hazard. But as long as you're standing up here on this container, it's what? It's an hazard. It's an hazard. Um, Captain Joshua is helping me out here. I said, also, if the crane is overdue for annual inspection, they've not carried out annual inspection on the crane as well. 
the crane now is an hazardous crane. It can happen, it can caput and do anything, anytime. So we have been able to analyze hazard, hazard, hazard. Yeah? And I wish I was writing that down, but that was not the exercise. But I really like how this was really um, uh, an interactive one. So now let's take that hazard mentality now and let's come back again now to our um, mooring operations. You get it? And the reason why I'm saying that is because for every for a risk assessment to be carefully examined and to be properly done, every single hazard that you identify, you must be able to identify corrective steps to reduce it, to reduce the, the harm it will cause or remove it. Am I communicating to remove the army to cause or do what or reduce it? So now we've talked about SS um, mooring ropes, and that's also coming in line with clear death policy where we try to see the other time. Now, um, Agaba, I want to ask you again so that I can be sure you understand me. This guy wearing gloves or not wearing gloves is that an hazard no sir it's not an hazard it's not an hazard so um beatrice give me another hazard here okay the uh brown mooring rope the brown brown but, rope are you meaning the excess mooring rope that we have over there back yes sir okay thank you so SS mooring rope, I've already written it down as well. So it, it's kind of, I mean, it's my tango. Another hazard. There is no snapback zone indicated on the deck. There is no snapback zone um, indicated. So that means that you might mistakenly find yourself in a snapback zone, correct? That is affirmative. So that's also another um, hazard. OK. Can anybody, is there any other hazard we can think of here? So I yeah. think the wind blast uh, is an hazard also. The what? The wind blast itself is an hazard. The wind blast is an hazard. Thank you. So explain. Yes, they could, during the process of it coiling the rope, there could be a mechanical failure or it overshoot and starts really very fast. You pull, you pull them and they are pulling the rope with tension. And it, the rope, sorry, when there is a mechanical failure on the wind glass itself and it starts spinning very fast, it you can pull them along. If they are not, at least, if they are, they are very close to it. Yeah, I. I agree. So when we're doing the hazard description, how do you want me to put it here when you're feeling it? Mechanical failure of the wing glass. Failure of wing glass. Failure of wing glass. Thank you. Did you see what I wrote there? Um, Peter, are you there? Did you see what I wrote there? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Which sir. is what? What did I write? Potential, potential failure of wind blast. Potential failure of wind blast. Thank you. So that's, we are now anticipating if, in case we are doing the work, I know the wind blast fails. Are you getting me? So we'll come, we'll come into that because that's an interesting point, especially point three. 
Um, it's really an interesting point. Why? Because the way this number one is forming macho man with his left leg there, if anything goes wrong with that wind lance and he's not well balanced, it might be hot. Um, one more hazard. One more hazard. Let's look at the back of this of this female, of the lady drawing the rope. What might happen if she just continue being so engrossed in that drawing of rope and she's going back and back? Beatrice, help your sister. Okay, she she may uh, fall. She may Why? hit her. Because she's so close to the beat. Close to what? She's close to the beat. Exactly. The ruler. So she's close and apart from even apart from that, did anybody say anything on the floor there? There's a green rope. Is it green or blue on the yellow rope? I don't really know what, what that's for. Okay, I'm still... Let me see whether I can draw. I've not drawn on this one before. Is anybody see this one? Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Hmm? Is that, yes, is that yes, an hazard? It's an hazard, yes. It's an hazard. So, what will you do? Trip and fall. Thank you. See, if you do a risk assessment for more operation and do not do sleep, trip, and fall, you have not completed your risk assessment. Hmm? So, Is anybody seeing another hazard? Okay, sir. Um, about the slip and fall, can the state of the sea be a hazard also? If the state of the sea is not calm, it can also lead to slip and fall also. This, the state of the sea will cause rolling and pitching. Now, is that the vessel is rolling or the vessel goes? Then she is that will that one cause any arm if you are so engrossed in this morning operation? And uh, it's because it depends on the severity of the pitching and rolling. Because if there is, if the rolling is very, is the, the angle of roll is very high, it, they will not, they will, they will find it difficult to start to really balance the step on the deck. Mm. And the morning operation. Thank you very much. That's that's a very brilliant um, answer. That's a very brilliant answer. Thanks. So yeah, that's a very brilliant question, and that's a very brilliant answer. Um, to be honest, the rolling and the pitching of the vessel. Because no matter what you did, after, while I was <laughs> one of the time I was a cadet, rolling a pitching has really almost caused an accident that will have cost me my hand um, as well. So thanks for noting that. So rolling, excessive rolling, especially. Thanks. One more last one. And I'll just give us an hint. This is what is going to, oh, I'm not, okay. I'll give us an hint. This is what is going to happen. What do you think caused this one? Is anybody seeing the screen? Can anybody see my screen? 
Yes, sir. I'm just trying to confirm whether I'm sharing the right screen. Affirm So, I think this guy went to go and pull his legs. What do you think is going on here? I, I think he was standing from what I can deduce from the picture. Maybe he was standing there. Why do you think mm -hmm. he was standing there? What are we making him stand there? Probably the, 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 the mm -hmm. machine got to work and he's trying to free what something there. Okay. And it was rolling. Let's, let's look at, but let's, let's look at the he's old back. the operator. He was operating something. He was okay, yes, he, he operating the Okay, he was operating it. Yeah, that's, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get us somewhere. Uh, Beatrice. In experience. Will you, will you go and stand yeah. there? Will you stand there? Put your leg there to adjust something. No. 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 Why do you think we make someone go and stand there? Inexperience. Negligence. Thank you. Go right. set that. God bless you. You you make everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, inexperience. So let's come back again to our risk assessment. Eh? This man standing in this front now. Um, who again will I will I call? Agaba, is that how you undo moral operation? Negative, sir. Negative. Eh? Negative. Thank you. So let's. <laughs> Someone is saying fatigue. That's the person when they are slept. They are doing well. <laughs> yeah. Someone is chatting me fatigue. Who is this interesting person? Uh, Ola Toby, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so in experience of the crew, can everybody agree that's an hazard? Yes. Yes. In experience, we cause such occurrence, which is not good. Huh? And especially this is especially even during more, I mean during well um not more operation during um entry of um enclosed space you send this up so on down there to go and especially to go and rescue another person without taking precautionary measures that will this is always going to happen so inexperience. of crew and we might say it's funny but to be honest it's not funny why i'm just going to show you what that might be a cartoon but this is the real scenario is everybody seeing my screen here yes this happens this is not the first time this one i mean this is this is really brutal but this really happens especially when you know find yourself in places like that. So now we've been able to um, yeah sorry. So yeah, we've been able to identify six. that's good. If we're able to identify six hazard and we're able to understand why we call this this hazard. Now look at the screen here. the persons at risk. Is another thing that we'll be looking at. Remember what Captain Joshua and I have been trying to tell you is careful examination of any work that has potential to cause harm. Also, inside Code of Safe Working Practice, chapter one, we try to explain to you that you need to identify who and who will cause who and who will be armed. Are you understanding me? So now we're going to identify who will be armed, which is, of course, obviously, these two guys here in the front. These two guys here also in the front. Um, control measures. For one, uh, who said excess money ropes? I did, sir. What? Okay, I'm going to just, um, one second. I'm going to just enlarge this so that we can all see. Um, 
Thanks, Captain Joshua. I was just trying to bring everything in one page. I'm going to separate this. So it comes on other. Yeah, thank you. So I've now separated all the hazard in different, different columns. Now, control measures. There was someone telling me about hand gloves, and that's and that's this is where your interesting point comes in. But I'll, I'll come I'll come to you when it's time. Who mentioned excess morning ropes? I did, sir. Thank you. So what do you think we should do here? And the control measure here is since both of the two of them are partaking in the job. The, well, the control measure that can be applied is when the front one pulls the rope, the excess can be cleared by the one behind instead of allowing it to coil close to his leg. As, as the rope comes, it pushes it away. As the rope comes, it pushes it away. Because most of the job is being done by the one guy in front. So he has, he has, uh, has time to also push the rope away, of allowing it to coil close to his leg. Okay. That was the uh, Peter, one thing you need to know is we we have this thing in our mind, but composing it in a let me say in a well structured answer okay. that hits the nail on the head is what examiners are looking for. Is that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. So just in one word, what's your Let control? Because yeah, you are the one feeling this. Okay, make sure there's okay, make sure there's clear deck policy. When make sure there's what. Clear deck. You clear your why did you read the money operation? You there's a clear deck policy. You make sure you implement clear deck policy. Implemented at all times. Huh? Yes, sir. So Peter, you come back. They started, they've been pulling the they put the rope, put the rope, they've been doing clear deck, and then you are the officer, and then you went downstairs and you came back up. And you saw they forgot to pull the rope again. It's all so messed up. What will you do? Um, stop the job and thank you. Stop the job, review, and ensure that this implementation of clear deck policy is implemented um, as well. Before we even start a clear deck policy, um, Beatrice also highlighted the other rope. It's actually yellow, but it's just, you know. It's already dirty, that's why it's looking black. Um, Beatrice, what are we going to do with that one? Okay, yeah, we'll call it up and uh, well, so call, call it up. What's the control measure? What are you trying to achieve? It can also cause a fall, yeah, it can cause, but now we're trying to achieve something. So, why what are you going to do now? A clear environment. So can I say something regarding the uh, rope? Yeah. Okay, I see from what I see is obstructing an exit point. In case there's an emergency and yeah, it's obstructing that escape route. Okay. Um that's that's noted. I want to pause at this point and see. I and think and the little. Yeah. I want, to, I want to really pause at this point because today is going to be, I really like it as we're having two captains in the house. And I really like to plead with us, please, next time, let's come earlier because the time is almost going on. It's really interesting, but we've not been able to get much. But let me quickly, please, bring in um, Captain Joshua. And he has just highlighted to me that there's another important factor, which I wanted to talk at the end, but I think it's better we talk at the middle before going down to control measures. So please, Captain Joshua, we've alighted the hazard, we've alighted persons at risk. What will be the next step? Sir? Then we go down to controlled measures. Okay, thank you, Captain Afolabi. 
you can, as you can see on the phone, after the hazard description, we have the person at risk for the morning, uh, morning rope, excessive morning rope. We all believe the person at risk is the employee. And uh, also we have to talk about the initial risk, which includes the likelihood of the risk, the severity of the risk, and the risk himself. Okay, so what is the likelihood of we having this excessive morning room coiling the, uh, the crew leg? So the likelihood, is it very unlikely? Is it unlikely? Or is it likely or very likely? I want to answer a, from us. Please. That's a question for everyone. Very likely. Very likely. Very likely. Okay, I'm just going to start so very from the yeah, yes, just... from the risk rating. We are very likely. Yes. So also the severity, slight arm. Moderate arm or extreme arm. So if that rope should tangle anyone's leg, is the arm going to be slight arm? Is it going to be moderate or extreme arm? Extreme arm. Extreme arm. arm. Very good. Yes, they may lose their leg. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. So. Ah. Uh, from the risk rating, if we are going to choose the same arm, it means the arm is very, very rich. It's very, very high risk. But if we are going to choose the same high, let's talk about this. What, what do we mean by same arm? It means loss of life. So can the rope cause a loss of life? Yes or no? Beatrice? Yes, it can. Very good. So that is why we have to go for the extreme arm. So if we scroll down to the severity and the likelihood now, we have to choose very likely for the likelihood and for the severity, we would go for what? Extreme arm. Extreme arm. Which will result into, yes, which will result into very high risk. Can we scroll down? Yes, sir. Yes. So the likelihood is is what, well, Beatrice? Very likely. Very, very unlike. Very like. Very likely. Okay. Severity. Severity extreme. extremely high. Extreme harm. Extreme arm. Extreme arm. Okay, yes. And uh, very risk high risk. is very high risk. So after we put our yes, then after we put our control measure, our control measures we have make sure there is there is clear deck policy implemented at all times and a safe working environment. So after putting this control measure in place, what is the likelihood? Um, this that's coming. Uh, mm. that very, very, yes. The likely would be what? Hello, Agaba. Peter. Peter. The yeah. likelihood is if if those control measures have, have been put in place. Then it is unlikely that 
they will be they will be harmed. Very good. Unlikely. So is it unlikely yeah. or very unlikely? Unlikely. Uh, unlikely. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Also, the severity now, I believe, it should be slight arm. Yes. Slight arm. So we can see what our graph gives to us now. We are going to have very low risk. Is that fine? Very low risk. That's correct, sir. So let's go down to the. So we're coming down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we have unlikely for the likelihood. Unlikely for the likelihood. And uh, very. And a slight arm. Slight arm for the severity. And the risk is very low risk. Low risk. Thank you. And this is what we call risk assessment. So from the definition of risk assessment, we have been able to do what to examine the nature of the job. And we have been able to do what we have been able to see the potential hazard in the job. Also, after putting a precautionary action, we have been able to mitigate or eradicate the hazard. And this is what risk assessment is all about. So after putting your control measures, if your residual re uh, risk is still, if your re residual risk is still high risk, then you should do what? You should, uh, we should have, we will have to stop that operation or look for other ways that we can mitigate the risk. Let me give you an example. Now, you want to go into an enclosed space. What are the control measures you can put? You know, definitely one of the biggest risks you have in an enclosed space is shortage of oxygen. So definitely, I expect you to gas free the space. But in a situation whereby, because of time, you cannot get free the enclosed space, what do you use? I expect you to use an SCBA to go into such an enclosed space. So that is, after you have done your uh, risk assessment, yes, one of the hazards you find that is shortage of oxygen. What is the likelihood? Very likely. Severity, extreme high. And after you put a mitigation, which is gas frame of the enclosed space, you have said that after gas frame, the oxygen level is going to come up. You check the oxygen level and still you don't have up to the expected oxygen level, which is 20.8, 21 to 10. So which means you going into that enclosed space is still dangerous. But you still need to go in there. What do you do? You have to reassess the situation again. Put additional control measure. So one of the additional control measure you can put in is for you to use a BA. I think we are clear enough about the risk assessment. Yeah, so um, we're just gonna do one more. And yeah, before we call it on, it's going to be very fast. I'll call um, Beatrice. You pointed out the extra pin attached to the morning bullet. Do you have, so what's the, what's the um, likelihood? Let's come down to the risk factor. Do you want me to put the picture up for you? Yeah, I can see. 
Okay. So what's the likelihood of it? Very likely. Very likely. Yeah. Okay. Then what's the severity of the arm that it will cause to your sister? Extreme harm. Because if she sleep and hit her head, she may give up or have a severe injury to her head or breaking of bone, her backbone. So it's extreme harm. Extreme harm. Okay. So what's going to be the calculator? Uh, very high risk. Very high risk. Thank you. Very high risk. So we come back again, and then we come to we come to quickly fill this place here, which will be very likely. Very likely. Uh -huh. Extreme harm. Extreme harm. And uh, what very do we have? High risk. Very high risk. Very high risk. Perfect. Perfect. What are going to be the uh, mitigating measures, control measures we we'll put in place? What do you want us to do? The control measure, there should be a... That's, a that's really, that's a big one. That's a, a thick one, so don't, don't stress, don't, um, don't beat yourself <laughs> if you can't get much of it. But, yeah, but there should be a sign indicating the presence of that pin. Maybe okay. a red, uh, a red sign. Sorry for me. Okay, can someone else help us here? And the the measure there is they should not because since that is the stationary so that cannot be removed. The measure is that they should be make sure they are observant of it. They should try and be observant of it because it cannot be removed. The that point cannot be removed, so they should be observant, very observant. Mm. Observant. Okay. Um. So that means they should be fully aware of it. Fully aware of it. Yes, sir. That is good. Thank you, sir. Being fully aware of of a pain that is there, is it gonna stop it from harming you? No, it it's not going to stop. But it there is likelihood the person may forget, may still forgetting during the course of the work, may be carried away. Because she knows it's there. I mean, our Zoom. But being aware or being reminded, it doesn't stop the arm there. You get is well, then yeah. And then the solution should be they should they should can be cut off and repositioned for future reference. Because I don't really know what the use of that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of um, that's not a good point, but that's for future um, prevention of your occurrence. At this point, we are about to do a model of this is what we have. Hmm? Um anyone. Can anybody suggest maybe we pick, we use another um, capstan? Yes. Yes. It's also that use another capstan like... without that pin. Use another capstan without that. So you know, the, she stays at the other side of the capstan where the pin is not there. Mm, are you sure you don't want to carry another risk assessment for that? You're going to be going down to where the rope is exactly. Huh? Change location. Yeah, change the location of the job as well. So the location of the capstan, or you change the location. Okay. I mean, when I mean change the location, I mean change the capstan that you're using uh, as well. Um, there was something okay. that, that came to my mind. Yeah. Somebody was talking of awareness and Beatrice, you were saying you might forget. 
is this something we can put an extra amount to what? always watch both of them when they come close to that pin? Yes, that may help if there is an extra man to watch and alert them whenever they are close to the pin. Thank you. Um, Peter, are we speaking the same language? Yeah? Yes, sir, we are. Good. So now with this one, which is very irix. Should we go back to the calculator? What's now that we put these control measures, what's still the likelihood of it happening? Um, Beatrice. Yeah, so we are going to have a uh, likely. Likely. Yes. So we will do from very likely to likely. Yes. Okay. I think it should be on likely. No, if, if we change okay. location, then. then no, it should be you already unlikely. have an extra man watching over. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, or we change location. So it will be unlikely. To be unlikely. Remember that change location is still um you know is not yet certain. So we are just looking at an extra man at the present. So for, for an extra man, is it likely or not? For likely? an extra man is still likely to occur mm -hmm. because of human error. The extra man may also make mistakes. And then the severity. Mm -hmm. It's going to be slight harm. Oh, automatically, why? Because the, the arm, man the is not remains forget. the same if the extra man forgets. Huh? Yes. Yeah, it will be moderate if the man. Because when when we say arm, okay. we are talking it about what that pain. It may be that the lady. We are still talking about what that pain will still do. So even if the man, you know, forget or something like that, you say it's still it's still likely to happen, likely or not, the arm itself might still remain the same. Remain the same. It's not supposed to. It's not supposed to fully remain the same, but it might still remain the same. So you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So what do you think will be, should we start again? So we have an extra man and we have um, science posted there that there, there's an hazard over there. Should be more. Moderate arm. Moderate. The harm will be moderate, nothing at all to anything. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Moderate harm. All right. So we have moderate harm, we have likely, and then we come down. Is the job going to go ahead? High risk. Is it is it IRIX? So we've brought it from very IRIX to IRIX. Are we good to go? Yes. Yes, they can carry out the work. Mm. No. You don't want to do that as an officer. You don't want to send people on an IRIX as an officer. Yes. True, yes. True, yes. So what are we going to do here? Okay, I'll just bring us the answer and um, because of time. 
but it's been an interesting interactive class. But we've been out there. Um, no, I'll bring Captain Joshua to come in and help us out here. Captain Joshua, are you there? Yes, I'm with you, sir. Okay. Just Hello. As well. uh, we can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Um, I think you're far from the mic. We can't hear you. Can you hear me clearly now? Can anybody hear Captain no. Joshua there? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me clearly? Okay, yes, we can hear you. Okay. For us having high risk, you, you can see substantial effort should be made to reduce the risk. So we have to add, we, are, we will need to bring in additional control measures. So in this situation, what else can we do to reduce this hazard? So yeah, I'm I'm just gonna also add to what Captain Joshua said, although I'm not I'm not fully hearing him, but I think he's saying we will have to put in extra control measures. Um Beatrice, Peter, um Agaba, in this case here, if this is the only morning bollard that we have, can you read what this eye is saying? Yeah, what does I say? Mm -hmm. Additional control measures required mm -hmm. within a specific time frame, mm -hmm. and it may be necessary to suspend work mm -hmm. until this is uh, achieved. Okay. Thank you. Specific then... arrangements should be made to keep control measures monitored and maintained as all times, at all while times work while okay. work is underway. So, as an officer, what decision will you make? Suspend the work. Suspend, Suspend the work. work. Thank you. Whoever said um, that is nice. It's because if you cannot really bring it down to at least, you know, medium risks, uh, you still, you cannot, you shouldn't even go ahead with a risk as high as this. Yeah, additional control measures will be required. So what we now do is suspend the work uh, and then bring in Peter's idea which is to find a way and either relocate our working environment or find a way you know, to remove this or find a way to get an extra man who will solely be looking out for people, I mean, for, I mean, for this lady or for the people that will be caught by this, um, by this arm. Are we getting- uh, Can I suggest yeah. something? Yeah. They can also, instead of standing after the, this point, they can stand before it also. They can stand before what? Instead of standing, right now they are after the, the point, this uh, uh, tension we are talking, this thing we are talking about. Okay, now. right now they are here. So right? point, yes, they can stand, they are standing after it now, so they can stand, stand before it. Okay, so why you want them to the stand here? Yes, ahead. yes. Exactly. So when you stand there now, what happens to likelihood? It's, it's the likelihood of, is not reduced. To what? To from unlikely. To unlikely. Because right now, right now in their front, they are seeing it. And severity. Severity is medium. Thank you. So severity medium, because it's not like they're falling forward or they're falling back. Although, yeah, that can be really be, be another argument, whether it's medium or high. But fine, let's leave it on, on medium. But that's moderate arm, correct? Yes, sir. So it comes down to medium risks. 
So uh, the whole dynamics of this thing is not like there's a um there's a one plus one answer is equals to two, but although we have to use some logical reasoning into all these things as well, which you know Peter has just said. But also practically, practically we kind of a little bit far from the mind bullet, but let's take that out of um, what we're talking about here. So we've been able to see how we brought a very high risk to a low, I mean, to a high risk, it was not workable. Then we took it down to a medium risk. This is how risk assessment, you know, is being done. I'm sure everybody, you know, we have kind of an understanding of risk assessment now. Yes, sir. Thank you. So yes, sir. I will, at, at this point, we've really taken a lot of time. I really appreciate, you know, everyone has come in. Thank you, Captain Joshua. Thanks a lot. Uh, please, next week, let us come early so that we can, you know, start up as, um, as fast and get it up um, early. Next week will be question and, I mean, not question and answer. The question and answer is like students asking the teachers. But next week will be an all hours on, on risk assessment. And trust me, you don't want to miss it. So let's, we're going to be bringing the questions that examiners have asked students on risk assessment. And I will bring it down here for us to, to answer. So there might be there will be students and there will be examiners next week. It's going to be another interesting, interesting one. And it will be practical. The student is going to feel the, the risk assessment. So don't run, but it will be interesting, trust me. And we are all here to learn um, as well. So I'll say thanks, thanks very much. And I know it's 15, but there's Valentine is still um is still around. So please, if you've not bought someone a gift, try and try and get someone a gift as well. Uh, happy Valentine. Happy Valentine to everyone. And thank you. Thank you very much. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, sir. Happy yeah. Valentine. Thank you. you. Thanks, Captain Joshua. Thanks, Peter. For that to be. Thank Agaba, you. thanks a lot. Um, Peter, yeah. thanks. Chiki, Olivia, I didn't hear, I didn't hear your voice today, but I hope to hear from you next week as well. All right, thank you. Bye. Uh.